Julia from GE Teaching Resources and welcome to tonight's video. Tonight we're going to be talking about the instruments of the orchestra and some lesson ideas. So I am just about ready to start teaching that with my year seven classes. Next lesson. So some of them I don't So I'm just getting cold. Um, so I said our year is only just sort of starting. So I'm going to show you a couple of things that you can use in your classroom. Now, I've also been doing some other things as well, which I'll show you um, uh, and show you those as well. But I said just a few ideas. Some really, It's a really simple resource. I made this resource a long time ago, um, but I still use it because it works. And sometimes simple is the best. Sorry, I've got it something in my face and it's annoying me so let me just share screen when I find it here we go this is what I'm looking for okay so I'm going to show you a few things from here we go so as I said we're talking the instruments of the orchestra and because this is what I'm usually doing with year seven oh, I don't know who that was so I'm just going to get rid of that sorry no one ever rings me and then somebody rings you and you're just about ready to do something else. So I'll just change all these things, settings. Okay, so as I said, I'm sorry, um, we're looking at the instruments of the orchestra lessons and some ideas, some ways that you could teach it without it being too boring and without it being, um, we'll just get the kids more engaged. Okay, so that's the way we want it, isn't it? So as I said, um, welcome. We are going to, I'll explain what the four families of the orchestra are. You'll see a, a mind map that I use a lot um, to explain these things with the kids. Um, I'm going to give you a quick tour of what's actually in the resource and um, then I'll give you some lesson ideas. And then I'm also going to show you how to turn one of these worksheets, one of these simple worksheets into an extended writing piece because at the moment, my school, that's what we're all about. We're all about extending that writing and getting those kids writing um, no matter what class they're in okay so that's what we are doing so as you can see the instrument families here so this particular resource is either in it's in both the elements of music mind maps and the concepts of music mind maps because it's the same um you need to be talking about instrument families in both those things but you can see this one's coming out of the concepts of music mind maps but both those are available in my store if you want it to look exactly like that you would need to actually go and get that from my store but if you'd like the free version don't forget you can also get that over in my um, website or you go juliajulia.com forward slash free mind maps i think that's how you get there and again you'll be able to get your free, self a free copy and there's all this information is on the website anyway juliajulia.com um i said it's all there for you oh hang on let me talk about it though it helps if i do sorry i don't feel like i'm really with it today so i know i hear there's five different things but there are four instruments families from the orchestra now i like to preface this when i'm teaching the orchestra that this is western european tradition this is not um from any other culture like in terms of this is the western european tradition so you know you've got to sort of think about and introduce it from that perspective that we're not just talking about because I don't want people to think that this is the only music and classical music is and the orchestra is the only sort of music that's out there it's certainly not but for a lot of our kids the orchestra is something they don't know it's something they're not familiar with and it's really important that they get a really good idea of what the instruments are because it again it just broadens their horizons but it also might mean that they might be able to link an instrument that they know so maybe they do have a violin in their family they don't play it in the classical way but they might play it in a more folk tradition but the, that the instrument actually has other um, ways that it can be played so there are four main families we've got the string family instruments that have strings okay um, the brass family instruments with a cup-shaped mouthpiece as well as a that are made of brass the woodwind family instruments originally made from wood they're not all today uh, or have a reed in the mouthpiece so it could be a single reed or a double reed and then also we've got the percussion family which are instruments that hit shaken or scraped to make a sound now don't forget in the percussion family you can either have tuned percussion or untuned percussion in other words they can play a melody 
well, they can't play a melody. And then I've got voices there as well, because sometimes it's important to have, um, to understand that the voice is still a family, uh, sorry, it's still an instrument, which because kids forget that one all the time. So let me just show you what pages you actually get in this particular resource. It's not an expensive one. As I said, I made it quite a few years ago and I still use it. So you can see they've got the main string, main instruments from the string family. So the violin, viola, cello, and string bass. Some of you may call it double bass, as well as the other instruments, um, string instruments that can be included in the um, orchestra. So we've got the guitar, the harp, and the piano. Okay, so some people, um, again, you can classify the piano. This is a good discussion piece. Is it part of the percussion family or is it part of the string family? That's something we can talk about another time. Then, of course, we've got the instruments from the brass family. So we've got the trumpet, the trombone, the French horn, the tuba, and obviously the cornet, which is a smaller version of the trumpet. Um, all those instruments. Then instruments from the woodwind family. So again, the piccolo, flute, oboe, clarinet, bassoon, and saxophone. And I know, look, there's other versions of this. So there's like a bass clarinet as well as a contra bassoon. But for the purposes of um, what I'm teaching grade seven, I'd, I'd go deeper into that with my older students. Um, like there's a really fantastic um, YouTube video out there um, of a flute ensemble and they've got like this massive flute, like they, you have to stand up to play them. They're, they're amazing. They're amazing. And just to show the kids that what the sound is like on those instruments, it's yeah, it's quite mind blowing. Um, they really enjoyed doing that. Um, and again, obviously um, saxophone and the good, explanation about why those instruments belong together. Then of course we have tuned percussion. So xylophones, metallophones, glockenspiel, vibraphones and tubular bells. Now I know that the xylophone for an orchestra doesn't necessarily look like that. I know that um, it's really hard to get good clip art and they do look more like the vibraphone but the vibraphone, that vibraphone obviously has the thing, um, things there where it's got the motor you can see the little um, dials and stuff there for the motor for the vibraphone um, as I said they're the tuned percussion instruments and then of course there's stacks of untuned percussion instruments now we know that not all these are used in the orchestra sometimes they are sometimes they're not but again that is a really good way to actually for the kids to actually um go well, why would that be included in an orchestra why what sound is that you know producing and how many of them you need and all those sorts of things then you get a few bonus pages. So I really like to use these for um, music that my kids haven't listened to before. So depending on the what class I've got, depends on what page they um, I use, but the good old genre study, okay, um, all the connections, what, like the things that they know are a map or um, using the elements of music, um, a definition of the actual musical genre, and then also some um, a summary page. These are just really good um, pages for kids I know it's literacy based and it was interesting. I've got a comment in one of my um, uh, products that this, you know, my resources are too English language arts based. I'm not going to apologize for that because I'm sorry, even as a music teacher, I realize the importance of literacy and um, that the literacy, when my kids get literacy and understand what they're listening to and what they're um, studying, it actually makes them a better musician in the long run. So I, I said, I don't make apologies for that because I like them to have those connections a bit between different things. And then also the elements of music pages. Now these ones are actually all comparison pages. I don't know why I did that a while ago, but this is a good thing to have still. So you can see they've got rhythm, tonality, texture, structure, harmony, melody, perform media and timbre, and then obviously similarities and differences. Now I, at the end of our year seven year, we get kids to listen to um, do a comparison between two versions of the same song. Um, we use rock um, when we're doing this, but this is a good introduction to it because we'll, we will actually start doing this, this term in preparation for the assessment that's later in the year. So that's, that's probably why I did it because that's why we do this all the time talking about some similarities and differences. So you can piece, choose any piece of music that might just feature a particular type of, um, um, might be the whole orchestra. Um, it might be only a ensemble, like a wind ensemble um, or a brass ensemble or whatever it happens to be. For example, today in year seven, my kids, we were listening to an orchestral version of um, Harry Potter's Deathly Hallows piece. They were fascinated watching it. Um, again, just introducing them um, to different types of music and how are they performed. 
So some lesson ideas. Uh, you can obviously do lots of different things. Now, this is a really simple worksheet, okay? Now, I've got some here that have been printed two to a page. So hang on, I'll just get a couple of different ones. All right, so you can see Cabasa and Clave are there, okay? I said it's a good size at this point, like that size that goes in their books really nicely. Or we've got the cello and the violin, okay, which is really, again, hard to see. I need to get that better. All right, um, great for them to color in, get them idea of what the instruments look like. And obviously, if you've got these instruments available to you, take them into class, let them have a good look at it, a feel, um, what they look like, what they feel like when they're holding them, all those sorts of things. We don't have a lot of access to those instruments at my school. Um, we've got a few old ones that are really broken, but at least they get an idea of what it looks like um, and what they, well, they certainly don't sound any good the way ones we've got. <laughs> <laughs> they're not not happy they're not happy um but anyway some ideas that you could do with those particular worksheets so it's a good way to introduce um each family of the orchestra so you could do this as a quick little exercise um on the thing so um give them like we're going to do the string family so here's all the instruments and then do it as a, a roundup just do the worksheet again depending on how you want to do the worksheet but um if you want to do it as teacher directed we're going to look at the violin today now we're going to look at the cello blah 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 Okay, you could do it that way as part of a music classroom centre. So you might say, okay, so I'm going to work with these kids. They're going to be doing X, Y, Z. This group over here, you're going to be looking at the instruments of the brass family. Um, go and have a look and research that and then, you know, swap them around um, as an assessment or an assignment. Okay, again, they could choose one of the instruments they want to actually study um, or you could do, I like using good old wheel of names, that spinny wheel that you can get on the um, on the web and you just put the names in and pick a um, pick a name. Do, if you do two wheels, one with all the students' names and the other one with um, the instruments and then that's the instrument they have to study. It's a good way for them just to get that to do. Again, as a research lesson, it's a fantastic way for them to actually look at decent research and showing and finding out what is good research, what's solid research, and not just using Wikipedia. We don't want them to do that. Um, also have them complete a family of the instruments as a group. Okay, so they might be that, you know, okay, four groups in the classroom, one group you're doing brass, one your strings, your woodwind, your percussion, okay, you're going to just research your, your family and then as a group they then um, decide on how they're going to present that information and then present their information about the instrument family to the class. Again, a fantastic way for building so many different skills, whether it be group work, whether it be actually research skills, whether it be um, presenting skills, all those things, a fantastic way to do it. These are really good as a sub lesson as well. So if you've got um, a good set, like if you've got a set of laptops or um, Chromebooks or iPads or whatever it is, and it's your, it's okay for the, um, the substitute teacher or the casual teacher to take them through that lesson, fantastic way to do it. Leave them as, again, as a lesson idea for them to do or use it as an extended writing activity, which I'm gonna show you now. So we've got the vibraphone here. I chose that one because it's just an interesting instrument. And I love the kids actually really like listening to it because they, they're fascinated with that wobble in the in the the you know the vibra the vibrato in there. But they're fascinated with that. So you can see here that um, on that worksheet, it's actually got what's the name of the instrument, what's it classified as, what are the performance techniques, range of notes, register of the instrument famous in, um, musicians that perform, words to describe what it sounds like, the timbre, famous pieces that it's featured in. So really simple um, questions, but good ones. And I, I have to say, I've actually used this with my senior students when they've really struggled with um, this whole, th whole set, when they've struggled with um, understanding where instruments come from, what they sound like, um, what their register is and their performance techniques, because it really helps them as if you're doing a big tone color or timbre unit as well. So lots of ways to use it. So um, you can see here, what's the name of the instrument? So I've just got typed on the page for you instead of having to put up with my writing. The classification, tune percussion, words to describe the timbre. Now this is where you, you know, depending on the piece you're listening to, um, what it, they could do um, describe. So it could be wobbly or delicate or gentle. Performance technique is obviously hitting. 
vibrato, if they turn on the machine, I'll use the, the pedally thing, mallet dampening, harmonics and double. So again, like I was researching this one um, for this particular activity and there are lots of videos out there showing the kids how to actually make the different sounds, you know, and yeah, interesting ways to produce different sound um, sounds um, on the instrument. Range is about two and a half octaves, okay. Register is treble, famous pieces, um, musical pieces it's featured in. So we've got Roy Ayres, Everybody Loves Sunshine, Lionel Hampton's Hamps Boogie Woogie, and Cal, I think it's Chader, um, it was Manteca. And then obviously those famous musicians, the same one, uh, Roy Ayres, Lionel Hampton, and Car Cash or Cash Charter, okay, or Chater. So I'm not sure how exactly how to pronounce that. So I'll just escape. And this is where you could, you know, it's simple information to do that, but it's even better if you can turn it into a writing piece. So again, you might want to get kids or your students to actually do this together, or you could do this um, individually and use it as part of the assessment. So they've done the research and now they've actually got to write it. And again, you're looking for the language. So again, I, I really like my kids to use the correct language around music as much as possible. Okay. So um, to actually say that they're, um, they're using performance techniques instead of making a sound. Or sound production methods, you know, just just proper techniques. So, I'm going to say um, the vibraphone is an instrument that belongs to the percussion family. Okay, so we're just introducing what the instrument is. Okay, um, it is classified as a tuned percussion instrument because, and oh, I always do that, because it can play um, pitched notes and it um, require, it is, sorry, whoops, and it is hit to make a sound. So yes, we know it has a vibrato, uh, the, the motor in there, but the instrument still has to be hit before that vibration and the motor thingy kicks in to make the sound wobbly. Okay, I know I could be saying that better, but anyway, you get the idea. All right, so um, I'm going to use some words to, well, I might say that can be used to describe the timbre are wobbly, delicate, and gentle. Performance techniques used on the vibraphone. Oops, my mistake, sorry. On the vibraphone include and then you would just um, list them. What we've got there, hitting, vibrato, mallet dampening, harmonics, and doubles. Now, I would suggest that you would actually get the kids to actually define what each of those are, depending on the age group depending on the age group, because you might say to your kids, um, I only want you to find two performance techniques, depending on, again, the age group you're using this with, or you might want them to say, get to, um, you know, find at least three different performance techniques and their definition. Again, depending on how what much you want to actually extend them. All righty. Um, the range of notes... on the vibraphone is approximately, now you could actually get them to find out what notes they actually go from, like C to an E or whatever it is. Um, range of notes on, on the vibraphone is approximately two and a half octaves. And it is in the treble. Register. 
And I simply say, you know, when I'm list getting the kids to listen, I just say, look, what can you hear? Are the notes high or low? If you were sitting at the piano, is it your right hand or is it your left hand? And they sort of mentally get that picture in their head and they go, oh, it's this one, miss. Yep, exactly. That's right. So, um, treble register. Some famous. Now, there are different ways to call them, but some famous vibists, I think they call them. There was different, you know, or vibra, vibraphone performers or whatever you want to call it. Um, but there are different. This is one term use that. Some famous vibists include Roy Ayers. Did I spell that right? Yep. Is was it Lionel Hampton and oops I spelled that definitely wrong unusual name okay there are many different famous pieces um, now, one thing you might find is when you're looking at this, not all these instruments are used in the orchestra a lot. Some of them might be only used sometimes. But one famous piece, like the, a lot of these guys that actually perform here, they're actually jazz vibraphone players. So um, you could talk about that as well. So there are many different famous pieces for the vibraphone. Across several genres now this would be really handy where we're actually using those genre sheets that are included in across several I shall might say musical genres um, the following famous pieces are examples of jazz music. so we have and I'll just write that everybody loves sunshine. Camps. Okie. Okie. I'll paste that one. And man, Dicka. Now, you could leave it at that, but I always like to you know try and wrap this up so if you were doing this as a t triple xc paragraph or a music paragraph like is what i'd like to use so main idea understanding sample information etc so here your main idea is about the vib vibraphone it's an instrument and the understanding is um, about the percussion family and how it's it's um, classified there and then we've got all this next part is your sample information sample information sample information then we'd like to connect it to concept or connect it back to your main idea. Okay, so the main idea is about the vibraphone. Um, the vibraphone is a versatile um, tuned percussion instrument that can be heard in several different musical genres because of its unique sound qualities and that's essentially why the vibraphone is used where it is because it sounds unique it sounds pretty amazing oh i did that wrong so i love it when it tells me that it's unique sound cause oh go away so let me just make that a little bit bigger and let's go here and make it bold so it's easier to read okay nope too big so there you can see we've turned this little bit of information here into an extended writing piece um now one thing i didn't put on the lesson ideas was you could get the kids actually to do a presentation as a podcast so um you know uh podcast presentation i'll add that in there because that's what my kids are doing at the, at the moment. We're doing a podcast in, um, thing with their analysis, music analysis. So let me just go back to, so I said that was another lesson idea. You could actually add, do a podcast. I knew I forgot something the other day. So again, we talked about um, you could just simply use this as a worksheet. Then there's nothing wrong with that at all. 
some days we just need to do a worksheet and there's nothing wrong with that okay some days we need to actually push it a little bit further so you could turn that information that's on the worksheet into an extended writing piece as you can see here so we've got the vibraphone is an instrument that belongs to the percussion family it is classified as a tuned percussion instrument because it can play pitched notes and it is hit to make a sound some words that can be used to describe the timbre are wobbly delicate and gentle the performance techniques used whoops in vibraphones or on the vibraphone i should say uh, let's go um, used on the vibraphone include hitting, vibrato, mallet dampening, harmonics and doubles. The range of notes on the vibraphone is approximately two and a half octaves and it is in the treble register. Some famous vibists include Roy Ayers, Lionel Hampton and Kaj Charter. There are many different famous pieces for the vibraphone across several musical genres. The following famous pieces are examples of jazz music. Everybody loves sunshine, hamps, boogie woogie and mantika. The vibraphone is a versatile tuned percussion instrument that can be heard in several different musical genres because of its unique sound qualities. And that's the main thing. Like, so you can see just this nice simple worksheet, how we can turn that into a nice little bit of extended writing. And it makes the kids, if you give them that opportunity um, to do the research and to actually push themselves into this extended writing, it will help them in so many different ways, not just in music class. So you can find obviously lots of music classroom resources ready for you to use over my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Now in the Facebook description below and in the um, YouTube one, when if you're watching it on YouTube, I'll have the link in below for the actual resource, which is um, available in my store over in Julia Teaching Resources on Teachers Pay Teachers. Or if you'd like to get yourself a copy of the free mind maps, the elements of music mind maps, you can get them free. Remember the blank version. So it's just a black and white printable and you have to fill in the information. So you could pause this video fill in the information and get the kids to do it is at juliajulia.com forward slash free mind maps I said that will get you a freebie and if you'd like to find more information about timbre or performing media in music on my blog at juliajulia.com now if you go there you just have to go down to the bottom of the page and you'll see um, a thing that says elements of music click on that and from there you'll be able to find all the different elements of music and a whole stack of free information that I know a lot of people use um, to help their students so let me just stop share. And again, I just want you to, um, um, to realize that, you know, something nice and simple as that little worksheet, which is um, oops, that little one here. Okay, so it's, I said I've printed this two to a page. So because um, it fits nicely in my kids' books. Um, but, you know, complete the question questions have a discussion and if you're having you know they could be working in pairs they could be working solo is a group so many different ways that you can use this really really simple little worksheet Alrighty, and it's um just a fantastic way for kids to actually get themselves and dip their toe in the water of um of learning about the instruments the orchestra and you know the best thing if you get them to actually do that research themselves they will remember it they will know it more so than if you just tried to tell them all about that information. It does work that way sometimes, but it's a very passive way of learning. If you want them to actually be engaged, get them to actually research it themselves. So until next time, I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and happy teaching. Bye.